getting help. This is very important because a lot of people think that getting help is somehow negative. It is not a negative attribute to go get help. It doesn't mean you're any less intelligent than somebody else. It does not matter how long it takes you to understand some material. What's most important is at the end result. In the end, if you understand the material, then you are just as good as anybody else. And even if you do not get it, that doesn't mean you're any less uh, intelligent. It simply means you're going to need a little more time. So getting help is very, very important. It will reduce your frustrations and make your learning experience more efficient and productive. One very important thing that allows people to succeed is they've done studies that if you are organized, it will help you succeed. So we ask that you organize the materials that you receive along with all the work that you'll be doing. We recommend writing utensils, so pen, pencils, including colored pens and pencils, so you can highlight stuff, color stuff, circle stuff, uh, making sure you have a ruler because we are going to be drawing lots of things, a uh, two inch or three inch, three ringed binder with five or four tabs depending on whether you're using the Alex program or not. So your tabs in the binder should look as follows. You should have a handout tab. That's where you're going to put your syllabus, problem sheets, or anything you receive in class or email from your teachers. You will also put any sheets that you printed off of the internet for yourself. So all the handouts will go into the handout tab. Then you will have a lecture notes tab because remember, you are going to be watching videos at home. You're going to take notes as if you were sitting in the classroom. And then you're going to write a summary after each of the video lectures that you're turning in into class if you have a class that goes with it. And so either you're going to watch a lecture or you're going to read book pages. Either way, you're going to take notes and you're going to write summaries. So that all goes in the lecture notes tab. This next tab is the video log tab in which you are going to put answers to the questions you attempt that appear in the book or lectures uh, after so much material is covered. Okay, and then you would have an Alex tab if you're using the Alex program. The work that you do in the Alex learning mode or assessments, that all goes into the Alex tab. And then five uh, is classwork. So if you're not using the Alex program, then you would not have the tab number four. And then you would just have classwork tab, which will be if you have a live class that you attend, Everything that you do in the classroom will go in there, like attendance quizzes and so on. When you take notes at home, this is how it should look. You should have a date telling you what day, uh, the month, what date, and the year. And then write down what the name of the video is. Write down the questions that you're working on or lecture notes that you want to take. And then you should also have a for my's only column. It can be as big as you want or as small as you want. And in this column, you write things that you don't want the teacher to grade, but you want to make notes to yourself. So if I was asked to say, if, so if I was asked, what does learning a subject mean to you? To understand and reproduce it at a later date. Um, what does mathematics mean to me? You can even say things like, oh, I have no idea what this question is asking. And you can write your observations if you're feeling stressed. You can say, my throat is dry. I've not even begun to do mathematics yet, and I'm already stressed out. You can say, just the word mathematics brings negative emotions. These are just some things that people have written in their notes, and so I'm just sharing what students sometimes write in the form is only column. You can also put a little sticky note saying, breathe. So just don't hold your breath. Just always breathe. So you can do whatever you want in your notes here. And for my only column is there so that you can do your scratch work here. You can make notes to yourself. And then the notes are clean. And this is what the teacher will look at to grade. All right, time management is very important. It is important that you create weekly schedule and times of day when you have classes, work, uh, family commitments, and then in there somewhere, actually write down time when you are actually going to do the homework. It's important to do homework regularly at the same time because then your brain gets used to it and your body gets used to it, 
and it's very easy to keep it scheduled as if you're going to attend a class. Make sure you leave enough time to sleep. Studies have shown that getting enough sleep, like eight hours a night, improves the formation of long-term memory. So time management is about balancing your work and your school and your family commitments. Do not cram before tests. Cramming does not work for mathematics. However, steady, regular work is what you need to succeed in a mathematics course. In fact, if you have learned exactly how we're asking you to learn, then before a test, the day before, you're just going to sleep really well and not have to do any studying, and you get up and go, and you will be very surprised how well you do on the test. It's important to take personal care, as lots of factors can go into making a person stressed and sick or not do well in academics. So personal care is something very important. Sleep, like I just mentioned, make sure you get eight hours of sleep, because without sleep, your brain is not going to be functional, and you're going to have trouble thinking. Nutrition is very important. And certain foods will help your brain become more active and alert. Uh, walnuts, almonds, any kind of nuts, fruits, and vegetables are very good to keep your brain health well. And exercise, even moderate exercise, like walking 15, 20 minutes every day can make tremendous difference to your brain because doing mathematics is exercising your brain. So unless your brain is in good shape, it's going to be very hard for you to concentrate and to actually sit down and focus on doing mathematics problems. So all of these things are important. And then, of course, stress management. Do something to relax yourself at the end of the day or in the middle of the day. Like I said, even five or ten minutes of a meditation or a breathing focus practice uh, is very, very helpful in bringing control of the stress that you might be experiencing in your life, not just from the class, but maybe other things that are going on in your life at the moment. All right, so that is the end of our module zero. But before you begin module one, we would like you to do the following project and then consider going into module one. So the project we want you to do is following. Give yourself about 15, 20 minutes. Actually, go to the stop, you know, turn the stopwatch on, or if you have a timer on, turn it on for 15, 20 minutes. Take a handful of toothpicks, like 25 to 50. You can, if you don't have toothpicks, take nails, pins, paper clips. And then come up with a method to express or communicate how many toothpicks you have without using our base 10 number system. Well, what does that mean? That means you can't say, I have five toothpicks. You can come up with some symbols that represent numbers. So don't use our numerals. Do not use one, two, three, four, five or in, with whether in numbers, like it's written over here, or in words. So use a completely different system to come up with how you're going to count number of toothpicks that you have. Once you do that, then try to answer the following questions. Describe the system you developed. Could you generalize your system to a higher or lower amount of toothpicks? What difficulties did you encounter in doing this exercise? And then, would someone else be able to understand your system? So when you finish the project, then find somebody to discuss it with and share your findings, either in a classroom setting, if you have a class that you go to, or just friends or family members, and see what interesting discussion occurs when you do this project. All right, so we're to the end of this module zero, and we want you to take away a few things. Remember, you can succeed if you really want to. All you have to do is what? Try, don't give up, get help if you need it, be honest with yourself. Becoming self-conscious of your uh, thinking process is going to take you a long way. And don't see failing as a negative attribute, but a path to success. See, doing mathematics as a challenge for your brain and as something fun and exploratory and adventurous. A positive attitude is going to be key in your success. So persevere, be persistent, and be tenacious. Until next time, goodbye.